François de Salignac de la Moth Fénelon, French, D. La Mount Fénel, more commonly known as François Fénelon, the 6th of August 1651 to the 7th of January 1715, was a French Roman Catholic archbishop, theologian, poet, and writer. He today is remembered mostly as the author of the Adventures of Telemachus, first published in 1699. Topic. Childhood and education, 1651–75 Fainelin was born on 6 August 1651 at the Château de Fainelin, in saint mandane Perigord, Aquitaine, in the Dordogne River Valley, the second of the three children of Pons de Salignac, Comte de la Moth Fainelin by his wife Louise de la Cropta. Reduced to the status of impecunious old nobility. By François time, the La Moth Fenelins had produced leaders in both church and state. His uncle Antoine currently served as bishop of nearby Sarlat, a see in which fifteen generations of the Fenelin family had filled the episcopal chair. In fact, so many members of the family occupied the position that it had begun to be considered as practically a familial appanage to which the Salignac Fenelin had a right as seigneurs of the locality. Faon's early education was provided in the Château de Fénelin by private tutors, who gave him a thorough grounding in the language and literature of the Greek and Latin classics. In 1663, at age 12, he was sent to the University of Cahors, where he studied rhetoric and philosophy under the influence of the Jesuit Ratio Studiorum. When the young man expressed interest in a career in the church, his uncle, the Marquis Antoine de Fénelin a friend of Jean-Jacques Ollier and Vincent de Paul arranged for him to study at the Collège du Plessis in Paris, whose theology students followed the same curriculum as the theology students at the Sorbonne. While there, he became friends with Antoine de Noailles, who later became a cardinal and the Archbishop of Paris. Fénelin demonstrated so much talent at the Collège du Plessis that at age 15, he was asked to give a public sermon. About 1672 i.e. around the time he was 21 years old, Faon's uncle managed to get him enrolled in the Seminaire de Saint-Sulpice, the Sulpician Seminary in Paris. <laughs> Early years as a priest, 1675–85 In about 1675, when he would have been 24, Fénelin was ordained as a priest. He initially dreamed of becoming a missionary to the East, but instead, and at the instigation of friends, he preached in Sulpician parishes and performed routine pastoral work as his reputation for eloquence began to grow. In early 1679, François Harlay de Champillon, Archbishop of Paris, selected Fénelin as director of Nouvelles Catholiques, a community in Paris for young Huguenot girls, who had been removed from their families and were about to join the Church of Rome in 1681 he published a pedagogical work Traité de l'Education des Filles which brought him much attention, not only in France, but abroad as well. From 1681 to 1695, Fénelin was prior of the fortified monastery at Topic. Missionary to the Huguenots, 1686–87 During this period, Fénelin had become friends with his future rival Jacques Benigne Bossuet. When Louis XIV revoked the Edict of Nantes in 1685, the Church began a campaign to send the greatest orators in the country into the regions of France with the highest concentration of Huguenots to persuade them of the errors of Protestantism. Upon Bosset's suggestion, Fénelin was included in this group, alongside such oratorical greats as Louis Bordelouet and Esprit Fléchier. He consequently spent the next three years in the Saint-Ange region of France preaching to Protestants. He persuaded the king to remove troops from the region and tried to avoid outright displays of religious oppression, though, in the end, he was willing to resort to force to make Protestants listen to his message. He believed that, "...to be obliged to do good is always an advantage and that heretics and schismatics, when forced to apply their minds to the consideration of truth, eventually lay aside their erroneous beliefs, whereas they would never have examined these matters had not authority constrained them." Topic. Important friends, 1687–89 During this period, Fénelin assisted Bossuet during his lectures on the Bible at Versailles. 
It was probably at Bosse's urging that he now composed his refutation du système de Malbranche sur la nature et sur la grâce, a work in which he attacked Nicolas Malbranche's views on optimism, the creation, and the incarnation. This work was not published until 1820, long after Fanon's death. Fainelin also became friendly with the Duc de Beauvilliers and the Duc de Chevreuse, who were married to the daughters of Louis XIV's Minister of Finance Jean-Baptiste Colbert. He wrote a treatise on the existence of God. In 1688, Fainelin first met Jean-Marie Bouvier de la motte guyon usually known simply as Me Guyon, or simply Madame Guyon. At that time, she was being well received in the social circle of the Beauvilliers and Chevreuses. Fainelin and Guyon were cousins. Fainelin was deeply impressed by her piety and actively discipled her. He would later become a devotee and defended her brand of quietism. Topic. Royal Tudor, 1689–97 In 1689, Louis XIV named Fon's friend the Duc de Beauvilliers as governor of the royal grandchildren. Upon Beauvilliers' recommendation, Fainelin was named the tutor of the Dauphin's eldest son, the seven-year-old Duke of Burgundy, who was second in line for the throne. This brought him a good deal of influence at court. As tutor, Fainelin was charged with guiding the character formation of a future king of France. He wrote several important works specifically to guide his young charge. These include his fables and his dialogues des Mortes. But by far the most lasting of his works that Fainelin composed for the Duke was his Les Aventures de Telemach, The Adventures of Telemachus, son of Ulysses, written in 1693 to 94. On its surface, The Adventures of Telemachus was a novel about Ulysses' son Telemachus. On another level, it became a biting attack on the divine right absolute monarchy which was the dominant ideology of Louis XIV's France. In sharp contrast to Bossuet, who, when tutor to the Dauphin, had written Politique tirée de la Creature Saint which affirmed the divine foundations of absolute monarchy while also exhorting the future king to use restraint and wisdom in exercising his absolute power, Fainelin went so far as to write, Good kings are rare and the generality of monarchs bad. French literary historian Jean-Claude Bonnet calls Télémaque the true key to the museum of the 18th-century imagination. One of the most popular works of the century, it became an immediate best-seller both in France and abroad, going through many editions and translated into every European language and even Latin verse first in Berlin in 1743, then in Paris by Étienne Ville it inspired numerous imitations, such as the Abbé Jean Terrison's novel Life of Sothos 1731, which in turn inspired Mozart's magic flute. It also more directly supplied the plot for Mozart's opera, Idomeneo 1781. Scenes from Telemach appeared in wallpaper. The American president Andrew Jackson wallpapered the entrance hall to his slave plantation, the Hermitage, in Tennessee, with scenes from Telemachus on the island of Calypso. Most believed Faon's tutorship resulted in a dramatic improvement in the young duke's behavior. Even the memorist Louis de Rouvroy, Duc de Saint-Simon, who generally disliked Fainelin, admitted that when Fainelin became tutor, the duke was a spoiled, violent child. When Fainelin left him, the duke had learned the lessons of self-control as well as been thoroughly impressed with a sense of his future duties. Telemachus is therefore widely seen as the most thorough exposition of the brand of reformism in the Beauvilliers Chevreuse circle, which hoped that following Louis XIV's death, his brand of autocracy could be replaced by a monarchy less centralized and less absolute, and with a greater role for aristocrats such as Beauvilliers and Chevreuse. In 1693, Fainelin was elected to seat 34 of the Académie Française. In 1694, the king named Fainelin abbot of St. Valéry, a lucrative post worth 14,000 livres a year. The early to mid-1690s are significant since it was during this period that Mie de Maintenon, quasi-morganatic wife of Louis XIV since roughly 1684 began to regularly consult Fainelin on matters of conscience. Also, since Fainelin had a reputation as an expert on educating girls, she sought his advice on the house of St. Cyr which she was founding for girls. In February 1696, the king nominated Fainelin to become the Archbishop of Cambrai while at the same time asking him to remain in his position as tutor to the Duke of Burgundy. Fainelin accepted, and he was consecrated by his old friend Bossuet in August. <laughs> Quietist controversy, 1697–99 
As already noted, Fainalan had met Mi Guyan in 1688 and became an admirer of her work. In 1697, following a visit by Mi Guyan to Mi de Maintenon School at Saint Cyr, Paul Gaudet de Marais, Bishop of Chartres, Saint Cyr was located within his diocese, expressed concerns about Mi Guyan's orthodoxy to Mi de Maintenon. The bishop noted that Mi Guyan's opinions bore striking similarities to Miguel de Molino's Quietism, which Pope Innocent XI condemned in 1687. Mi de Maintenon responded by requesting an ecclesiastical commission to examine Mi Guyan's orthodoxy. The commission consisted of two of Faon's old friends, Basuit and de Noailles, as well as the head of the Sulpician order of which Fainalan was a member. The commission sat at Issy and, after six months of deliberations, delivered its opinion in the Articles de C, 34 articles which briefly condemned certain of Mi Guyan's opinions, as well as set forth a brief exposition of the Catholic view of prayer. Both Fainalan and the Bishop of Chartres signed the articles, as did all three commission members. Mi Guyan immediately submitted to the decision. At Issy, the commission asked Basuit to follow up the articles with an exposition. Basuit thus proceeded to write instructions sur les états de Oraison, which he submitted to the commission members, as well as to the Bishop of Chartres and Fainalan, requesting their signatures before its publication. Fainalan refused to sign, arguing that Mi Guyan had already admitted her mistakes and there was no point in further condemning her. Furthermore, Fainalan disagreed with Basse's interpretation of the Articles de C, as he wrote in Explication des Maximes des Saints, a work often regarded as his masterpiece, English, Maxims of the Saints. Fainalan interpreted the Articles de C in a way much more sympathetic to the quietist viewpoint than Basuit proposed. Louis XIV responded to the controversy by chastising Basuit for not warning him earlier of Faon's opinions and ordered Basuit, de Noailles, and the Bishop of Chartres to respond to the Maximes des Saints. Shocked that his grandson's tutors held such views, the king removed Fainalan from his post as royal tutor and ordered Fainalan to remain within the boundaries of the Archdiocese of Cambrai. This unleashed two years of pamphlet warfare as the two sides traded opinions. On 12 March 1699, the Inquisition formally condemned the Maximes des Saints, with Pope Innocent XII listing 23 specific propositions as unorthodox. Fainalan immediately declared that he submitted to the Pope's authority and set aside his own opinion. With this, the quietest matter was dropped. However, that same year, The Adventures of Telemachus was published. This book also enraged Louis XIV, for it appeared to question his regime's very foundations. Thus, even after Fainalan abjured his quietest views, the king refused to revoke his order forbidding Fainalan from leaving his archdiocese. <laughs> Later years As Archbishop of Cambrai, Fainalan spent most of his time in the archiepiscopal palace, but also spent several months of each year visiting churches and other institutions within his archdiocese. He preached in his cathedral on festival days, and took an especial interest in seminary training and in examining candidates for the priesthood prior to their ordination. During the War of the Spanish Succession, Spanish troops encamped in his archdiocese an area France had only recently captured from Spain, but they never interfered with the exercise of his archiepiscopal duties. Warfare, however, produced refugees, and Fainalan opened his palace to refugees fleeing the ongoing conflict. For Fainalan all wars were civil wars. Humanity was a single society and all wars within it the greatest evil, for he argued that one's obligation to mankind as a whole was always greater than what was owed to one's particular country. During these latter years, Fainalan wrote a series of anti-Jansenist works. The impetus was the publication of the C.A.'s de Conscience, which revived the old Jansenist distinction between questions of law and questions of fact, and argued that though the Church had the right to condemn certain opinions as heretical, it did not have the right to oblige one to believe that these opinions were actually contained in Cornelius Jansen's Augustinus. The treatises, sermons, and pastoral letters Fainalan wrote in response occupy seven volumes in his collected works. Fainalan particularly condemned Pasquier Quesnel's reflections Morales sur le Nouveau Testament. His writings contributed to the tide of scholarly opinion which led to Pope Clement XI's 1713 bull Unigenitus, condemning Quesnel's opinions. Although confined to the Cambrai Archdiocese in his later years, Fainalan continued to act as a spiritual director for Mi de Maintenon, as well as the Ducs de de Chevreuse and de Beauvilliers, the Duke of Burgundy, and other prominent individuals. 
Fa'an's later years were blighted by the deaths of many of his close friends. Shortly before his death, he asked Louis XIV to replace him with a man opposed to Jansenism and loyal to the Sulpician order. He died on 7 January 1715. Fainalan as reformer and defender of human rights Paul Hazard remarks on the bitterness of the questions Fainalan has his fictional hero Telemachus put to Idomeneus, king of Salente. Those same questions, in the same sorrowing tone, Fainalan puts to to his pupil, the Duc de Bourgogne, against the day, when he will have to take over the royal power, do you understand the constitution of kingship? Have you acquainted yourself with the moral obligations of kings? Have you sought means of bringing comfort to the people? The evils that are engendered by absolute power, by incompetent administration, by war, how will you shield your subjects from them? And when in 1711, the same Duc de Bourgogne became Dauphin of France, it was a whole string of reforms that Fainalan submitted to him in preparation for his accession. Finally, to complete the credit items of Faon's account, we must put his defense of human rights. Thus he speaks, A people is no less a member of the human race, which is society as a whole, than a family is a member of a particular nation. Each individual owes incomparably more to the human race, which is the great fatherland, than to the particular country in which he was born. As a family is to the nation, so is the nation to the universal commonwealth, wherefore it is infinitely more harmful for nation to wrong nation, than for family to wrong family. To abandon the sentiment of humanity is not merely to renounce civilization and to relapse into barbarism, it is to share in the blindness of the most brutish brigands and savages, it is to be a man no longer, but a cannibal. Topic. Quotations Sir Tout ne vous laissez point ensorceller par les attrits diaboliques de la géométrie. Above all, do not allow yourself to be bewitched by the evil charms of geometry. Irves completes de François de Salignac de la Moth Fallon. Tome V, Bryant 1810, Lettres CXLII, 142, p. 106. Topic. Works The Adventures of Telemachus Treatise on the Education of Daughters Dialogues of the Dead Lives of the Ancient Philosophers Christian Perfection The Existence of God Let Go The Royal Way of the Cross Maxims of the Mystics The Inner Life Topic. See also Human rights Christian mysticism François de Salignac de la Moth Fainalin missionary, half-brother and missionary Topic. References Topic. Further reading François de Salignac de la Moth Fainalin. Encyclopedia of World Biography, 2nd ed. Gale Research, 1998. Sabine Melchior Bonnet, Fainalin. Paris, Editions Perrin, 2008. Peter Gorday, François Fainalin, A Biography, The Apostle of Pure Love. Brewster, M. A., Paraclete Press, 2012. Christoph Schmidt Ma, Stephanie Stockhorst and Duan An, eds. Fainalin in the Enlightenment: Traditions, Adaptations, and Variations. Amsterdam, New York: Rodopi, 2014. Topic. External links. Works by François Fainalin at Project Gutenberg. Works by François Fainalin at LibriVox, public domain audiobooks. Works by François Fainalin at Faded Page, Canada. Works by or about François Fainalin at Internet Archive. Works by François Fainalin at Open Library. Avis Schrittin's Christian Council, 1810, English translation. Fenelon LibriVox free audio. Catholic Encyclopedia article. Educating Telemachus: Lessons in Faun's Underworld, by Hippocrates Cantzios.